Hello all, today we'll be giving our character a super jump in Blueprint. Let's jump in. Okay, in our third person template, let's create a new folder. I've called this double jump. In here, we'll create a series of assets. We'll code them and then we'll combine them and then we'll test all the logic. Let's right click, click. Let's start with a Niagara system. We'll use new system from selected emitter, hit next. I will start with the omnidirectional burst. I'm going to call this NS poof. Let's open it up. And I'm going to turn off gravity by clicking this checkbox. And that's all we need for that. Let's right click and create a new blueprint class of type actor. Let's call this BP underscore double jump pickup. At the same time, let's right click, go to blueprints and say new blueprint interface. Let's call this BPI double jump. First, let's click in the BPI. The blueprint interface will allow us to call events on the character and we will communicate with the character through the pickup. So here we have a new function. We'll call this allow double jump. And that's all we need. We'll hit compile and save. We'll go back to our blueprint double jump pickup. Let's open it up. We'll add a series of objects of components into it. Let's start with a static mesh. And we will make this a cylinder and we'll make this 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And we'll make this almost like a little Mario mushroom. We'll call this the cap. I'm going to make this a cone and I'll move it up to the top. And we'll scale this like that. And I'm going to drag this. Um, oh, let's make sure these are both movable. So I will attach the cap to the base. And let's just scale this down a little bit. Great. Now let's add a sphere collision. Let's change the radius to 75 and we will say, uh, we're going to type collision. We need to make sure that generate overlap events is true and overlap all dynamic is the collision setting. Now let's go to our event graph on our sphere. Let's right click add event on component, begin overlap. And off of other actor, we are going to say allow double jump. So this allows us to, when, once we implement this interface on the character, we'll call this event and it will set the feet, the settings for double jump. Let's hit compile. And let's also, um, we're going to say spawn system at location and we will use the Niagara system, the poof we just created. And so let's put that in here. Where do we want to spawn it? It's going to be at the default scene root of this actor. So I'll pull that off of my components panel and I will say, get world location, drag that in here. So now what's going to happen is we're going to test. We're going to call this event on the character. We're going to spawn the system at the location. And then we're going to destroy this actor. So basically once the collectible has been picked up, it's going to destroy itself. So we'll say destroy actor, drag this in here and we're good. And let's add a comment around this and say overlap event to organize it. So overlap, call to the character, spawn a particle system, and then destroy yourself. Let compile. And now let's go to our character. So we'll go to our third person character blueprint and we're going to do a handful of things here. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to create a material so that we know when the character has the double jump. So let's create a custom event over here 
and say add custom event and we'll say create material we'll also create a custom event that is change material and so on begin play so right up here is begin play we'll say create material let's grab our mesh from the components panel we'll drag that over here we'll say get materials and it will give us the array of materials on that mesh let's run a for each loop from here we will create dynamic material instance actually here let's uh create dynamic material instance and we want to okay so if we pull from the mesh uh, it'll allow us to select the index number from which we want to replace so say there's three materials by using this and pulling off the mesh directly we can automatically set it instead of having to reapply it later so i'm going to pull array index into here and i'm going to put the loop into here and pull the material into here so this is going to grab the materials run a loop on them create a dynamic material instance of each and then set it to the to the mesh in that index then let's promote this to a variable and by default it's going to be a single uh, reference but we're going to turn this to an array and we're going to call this I'm going to delete these we're going to call this dynamic materials and we're going to drag this up here and we're going to say get and then we're going to pull off and say set array element drag this into here pull the return value into the item and the array index into here and set size to fit true so this is going to create an expanding array of materials that we've created great so create materials in a comment and we've done that so now we need to add our double jump so the jump action is here now we need to add the logic that is going to be called from the pickup and add it to our player so as we did in the pickup we're calling this event so we need that interface in our character so if I go to my class settings, I added this previously, but I'm going to delete this. So I click over here where it says implemented interfaces. I select add, and then I'm going to go to my BPI underscore double jump. Now we can call all of those functions on our player. So over here on the left, I right click, say implement event. And now when I pick up that object, the, the blueprint, it's going to call this function on the character or any player that, or any object that implements this event. So let's add a series of variables. So we need to say is double jump active. And that's going to be a Boolean. And let's set the default to false. So when we call is double jump active, uh, or so when we call event allow double jump first we will get a branch and you can press and hold b and then left click to get a branch so we're going to say is it active if it is active don't do anything if it's not active we're going to add a new custom event and we will say set uh, double jump status and we're going to set this boolean to true here and then let's add a boolean input to this function and say uh, active status out of here we're going to add a branch i'm going to pull this boolean into here and so now the double jump is true what we want to do is increase our jump height so i'll grab my character movement 
and I'm going to say set jump Z velocity. And by default, this is 420. I'm going to change it to 1000. So now the jump is high. And I'm going to create a timer in which we'll turn off the double jump. So I'm going to say set timer by event. And I will pull off here and say create event. And I'm going to create a matching event. And we'll call this um, set double jump to normal. And I'm going to say that our double jump will only last five seconds. So this duration after this duration of time, this event will be called. And then we're going to set our is double jump active to false. And then we're going to call that same function from before that is set double jump status. But this time it's going to be now also do our material work. So we have created the materials up here. Let's get our dynamic materials array from earlier. Let's run a for each loop. Off of this, let's say set vector parameter value. And the parameter will change is tint. If you select the mesh and then go into any of the materials, you'll see that tint is the vector parameter will want to change to create any sort of color effect on the base material. So back in our character, we'll pull off value and say select color. And we'll use our is double jump active as the true or false. And when double jump is active, we'll make our character green. And we'll use white to create no tint. This is our, um, da, 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 da. so, so we also need to, let's, let's call this set double jump status here, set double jump status, make the status true. So call event from pickup, set status and revert. So let's review what's happening. In our blueprint for the pickup, which is our little mushroom object, we overlap it. And if the object that's overlapping it implements this interface, which is the double jump interface, it will call allow double jump. It'll spawn a particle system and then it will destroy itself. The, the character will receive that event. It will say, is double jump currently active? If, it, if it's not, we'll make it active, and then we'll set the status. What, because we've said active status true, when we go through this branch here, we're gonna set the velocity to 1000 for, for the jump. We're gonna set a timer, and then we're going to, um, in five seconds, we're gonna call this event where we set the status to false, and then we return the Z velocity. Now let's add our materials and then we'll test it. So in set double jump status here, we want to just call this event. So let's say change material. And we will also change the material here. Let's test this out in our third person map place a few of your pickup actors and let's jump in. So when I overlap, I'll turn green. I'll have a high jump for five seconds. And then when I turn white again, I'll have no jump. And now again, I have a super high jump. And so that will last for five seconds and you can change the duration of that, but that is the basic functionality for today's video.